Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis here at the Game Trade Media Studio in Timonium, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore, where you know we have you know it's a wild, wild west, the wire, if you will. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's just fine. Is that is that right? No. no, I live I live in Baltimore. I live in the city. You are hood. No, look at you. I mean, you're like, yeah, guns blazing just to get to your front door, right? All of them. No, not at all. Nice. <laughs> it's actually just fine. I'm Rick, hey. by the way. And I'm Dave. And uh, <laughs> reason we're talking like this, as far as there's a whole gangster thing going, because these oh. are gangster Jedi. Oh. That's oh I didn't I didn't get it I'm sorry it's okay no, sure yeah it's terrible I didn't it's I didn't prep them on this <laughs> so we're painting some Star Wars um, uh, uh, Imperial Assault miniatures yep. um, but we've been using these miniatures for our building character episodes re as of late where we've been doing some Force and Destiny character builds and uh, we these two characters that we're doing are part of a Jedi group. Yep. That goes oh. out and hunts down ancient Jedi artifacts oh, to return cool. to the new the new Jedi Order, the new Je Jedi Temple. Uh, it, in the timeline, I'm thinking it's going to be like after the last Jedi, so okay. it's a whole new group trying to reestablish themselves. Okay, ready. Right, yeah. um, so I am going to be painting. Um, let me get his name here. Slick Starwire. You can see him right here. He is a Duros. Um, there we go. Yeah, moved it out of the... <laughs> I did. And Duros? Duros is the, the is race? Is the race? Right. A Durosian? Oh, I don't know why he's not... <laughs> it's weird. I think that's part of his fourth power. Wait, wait, wait put him back in. All right. There we go. But there he is, yeah. So he's, uh, he's our <laughs> tech guy. He's a sentinel artisan, so he builds gadgets and gizmos. He's right. kind of like a rocket raccoon in okay. that regards. He is force sensitive however he doesn't truly believe that the force is what guides him that he is on skill and talent alone oh, okay. but the force does guide him and you are working on a character called netflix, netflix. and i'm going to avoid any red on him perfect yeah <laughs> so, well that would be good because he has given up his family's um background of entertainment right okay he's also a junior and how you can tell is because his name is n-e-t-t -T. so the, t yep. the the second t represents that he is the second generation of net okay, in right family right. of flicks okay so that's how you end up with multiple yeah lettuce at the end it, yeah. okay right, yeah. and uh he is a jedi as well he is a um human seeker uh, with a specialized tree pathfinder Okay. Which is kind of cool. Um, he also, but he believes in the Force. He's, he's, he's dedicated to the Force, but um, he does not prefer using a lightsaber. Okay. He can use one. He's, he's proficient, but he really prefers using the Force to guide his hand with a, with a blaster. With a blaster. Yeah. yeah. So a blaster is more reliable. Exactly. That's what he feels like. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, there are other characters that we built, and we'll be doing another one tomorrow on building character. So it thought it would be fun because we hadn't painted these miniatures. Um, yeah. Give it a give it a give it a go. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. That's good. Yeah, they're they're very cool minis. What's the, uh, do you know who this was originally? That character itself. Oh, the the model, the the original figure. So it's from Imperial Assault. Yeah, it's from Imperial Assault. It's from the Bespin. The Bespin um, box set, the expansion. Okay. And so it is. It is Han Solo. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. He's not from the Bespin. Okay. He is a smug. He's just a, a generic, generic smuggler. smuggler? Okay. Yeah. Um, right. From the Bespin one, I is the. I think the face has got a little bit of Harrison Ford in it, though. Oh yeah, it almost looks like the current actor playing Solo, actually, a little bit okay. more towards that is what I thought. Yeah. And they have, but he has the Solo stance, you know. Yeah. But sure, um, quite roguish. If uh, Leona would be so kind to see, I think um, uh, the other Jedi that we've already done is over there, I believe. So, oh, yeah, he is. So you guys can kind of see one of the other characters that has been painted. Granted, it's not a Dave Taylor paint. I did this paint job, but this is another one of the characters that's part of the group. It's wonderful. It's fine. It's, wonderful. it's just fine. There you go. Yeah, so he's the only one in the group that will actually carry a lightsaber. Okay. Um, as yeah. his primary weapon. And what's his name? Um, his name is... Tra... 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 Torfidian. 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 
Tracklin Torfidian. Tracklin Torfidian. Tracklin Torfidian, yeah. And uh, he is a warrior Jedi. Yep. And, uh, oh, that's his, his path? Yeah, his path is like, I, I believe it was right. warrior. Okay. Or guardian. Right. It was guardian. Yeah. Come cool. on. And all of the names for these come from the folks in the, in the chat. In the chat, yeah. Right. Yeah, Shane Bowler is the one that came up with Netflix. <laughs> right. I mean, it was a tough, tough call, actually. You know. Between that and Chip Oatley. Chip Oatley. <laughs> 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 that can be the the Wookie. The Wookie, but the, the Wookie's Wookie. a female. She can be That's Chip Oatley. That's fine. <laughs> Chip. It's not gender specific, Chip. That's true. Hey, if Chewbacca's son from the Star Wars Holiday Special can be called Lumpy. Then there are no rules. Can, can we you call know, what? Lumpy? Lumpy. Yep, you're completely correct. Completely correct. No rules. What's up, everybody? Who's all in the chat today? Okay, so James is here. Peter Adams is here. Oh, Nick right. is here. What's up? Zach is here from Alaska. Nice. Zach Eagle. Hello. Uh, where's he from? Black Eagle? No, his name is Zach Eagle, oh, and he's okay. from Alaska. Because my grandparents ah. used to live in no. okay. Toke and Eagle, Alaska, okay. which is right. kind of on the border of Canada. I've also, been, Carl is here. I've been to Carl. Chicken, Alaska. Really? Yeah. Nice. Which is on the, almost on the border of uh, the Yukon, Yukon Territory. Very cool. Cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And uh, this time on Facebook. On the Facebooks. Hooray. The gremlins have been thwarted. I say that, and hopefully that they won't rear their ugly heads again. I wouldn't say that they've been thwarted. We're just temporarily holding them off at bay. Right. Perfect. Also, um, works. Nick says Lump Lumpwaru, I think, was the full name of that yeah. uh, character. And Zach says he lives in Alaska, but he's moving back to Cali this summer. Going uh, back to Cali. Clive <laughs> says hello from the U.K., Hey, Clive. hey Clive. Sebastian says, sup from Montreal, Canada. Ah, oh, I love Montreal, yeah. Canada. Bonjour. <laughs> oh. Um, and Nick says, and later Chewbacca had a Jedi nephew named Lobaka. 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 Nice. Excellent. That's cool. That's some, that's some uh, Wikipedia right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. some Wikipedia. Good job, Nick. <laughs> Literally. I think it's great that we're also finding out uh, where people are yeah, watching it's so from. cool. Yeah. Definitely uh, neat. Our worldwide audience. Yep. Excellent. You're traveling to Canada this summer? I am traveling to Canada this summer. We're going to, we're flying into Calgary, and then we're going to drive north, uh, sort of northwest to uh, Banff. Banff? Banff. Isn't that, um... Isn't that where Nightcrawler that, lives? That's what I said. Isn't it the, the sound that Nightcrawler makes when he yeah, teleports? It is. Bamf. Just Bamf. <laughs> um, Bamf has two Fs, so it's obviously the oh, second. Oh, it's the second generation. Yeah, second generation of that city. city. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of New York. Yep. It's, yeah. yeah. It's like York with two Ks. Yeah. That's what you're thinking. Okay. Uh, or just York. We'll go there. Or we'll see Lake Louise and okay. the Athabasca Glacier, that sort of thing. Nice. We'll spend a bit of time with uh, my friend Terrace from... Paris? Uh, no. <laughs> From Geek Nation Tours. Oh, nice. He lives in Hinton, Alberta. And then, the real reason we're going up there, we're going to catch up with my mum and dad. For their anniversary. For their right? wedding anniversary. Yeah, their 50th wedding anniversary. That's amazing. They got married in Kamloops, British Columbia. Wow. That my mum actually taught there for two years. Well, not in Kamloops, but near, nearby. So... Are these Imperial Assault minis? They are. They are. They are. Oh, and James says, drop by Edmonton. <laughs> is that where you are, James? Mm -hmm. I think in Calgary. I, I thought, yeah. It, well, maybe not. He travels a lot up there. Yeah, this is true. I mean, Hinton's only an hour and a half or so right. from, um, from Edmonton. Nice. I think it'd be funny to show the girls the mall, the West Edmonton Mall. Do they not have Amazon in there, up there in Canada? Uh, they do, but I think... Amazon Prime? I think the West Edmonton Mall is still the largest mall in North America. Is it really? Bigger than Mall of America? Uh, I, I think it might be. Jeez. 
But of course, Mall of America doesn't want you to know that. Right. Johnny got to go to Mall of America last September, I believe it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the coolest thing about the Mall of America was there was a, a really cool uh, gaming store in the mall. Nice. Yeah, when we went to um, Asmodee North America's right, home okay. offices, um, which is the company that is the mothership to Fantasy Flight, Fantasy Flight. Yep. Um, Johnny got took a, took a afternoon break after we were kind of done with all of our work there and went to Mall of America. That was before we actually had to catch our planes, I believe. Uh, James says we do have Amazon and he travels to Calgary a fair bit. Okay. Um, and Zach asks, when are you guys going to do another Star Wars Legion paint session? Ha! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit twitchy. That's really funny that you say that. Oh, dear. Um, it sounds like you've got something planned. I do, but it's not going to be anything like we did before. Okay. Because yep. they are coming out with their little expansions and, yep. little, you know, you got uh, General Beers. And, and uh, Princess Leia. So like a, a hero in a yeah. um, squad box. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we just maybe we'll grab one of those up and paint, right paint yeah. one of those here in the near future. Yeah. That could be cool. Yeah. I think the, the next one, um, the next troop box for the Imperials is uh, for the Scouts. Ooh. The nice. Scout troop is not on bikes. It's like on a foot. Oh, okay. So yeah, that'd be cool. Very neat. The, um, yeah, because I shared this into the, the Legion group, the Legion Terrain group. Oh, okay, yep. Um, Excellent. So I figured they might have interest in yep. watching this, even though we're not technically painting Star Wars painting. Legion. Or terrain. Or terrain. It is Star Wars, though. But it is Star Wars, yeah. That's cool. Fans be fans. Yeah. And speaking of fans being fans, because we're fans of you guys that are watching us, um, I don't know how many of you are out there right now checking in. It looks like about 17 of you. Um, but we're going to do a giveaway today. <gasps> yeah. Cool. And how we're going to do that giveaway is you got to share this on your social media, and then in the comments, let us know that you shared it. All right? Because yeah. some people have certain privacy settings. That right. We can't see who shared it. Yep. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody shares it. And please don't just write shared. Let us know that you shared it uh, by actually doing it, please. Because um, you can cross-check who actually shared it with the with actual number on our end. Can't yep. you? Yeah, exactly. Cool. And uh, what we're going to be giving away is we've got some Dwarven dice set right here uh, and also a dice cup. Oh, cool. Both by Q Workshop. Under your camera, right? Oh, oh yep. okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so we got the dice cup right here, which is kind of neat. A little Very dice cool. cup. And then we've got some dwarven, dwarven dice, so you can uh, have some more dice to add to your collection, because we all know the answer to how many dice is too many dice. Not there's enough. never, There's never enough. Never enough. Never enough dice. Uh, and these are by Q Workshop. Uh, you can check out Q Workshop. Uh, on their social media, their website, just look up qworkshop.com. Yeah, very cool. And uh, yeah, so please share it, and someone's going to win those. We'll send them out in the in the mail, and get them to you. Very cool. Yeah. Also, Zach says, "I can't wait to paint Boba Fett. Oh. I wonder if I can paint him in 12 minutes. You know, for how much screen time he actually had." <laughs> nice. <laughs> is that is that accurate? I Did he have that much screen? <laughs> <laughs> Burn! Uh, no, I got no but, idea. But it, it sounds about right. But that would be a good one to do, actually. It's, I think those are coming out soon. The Boba Fett and the Boba Bounty Fett. Hunter. Yeah. So that would be a good one for, for us when we do our next Legion, actually. Do, the, do some Bounty so. Hunters. Yep. That would be fun. Because it's been a while since I painted a Boba Fett. Yeah. When was the last time you painted a Boba Fett? I uh, body painted a young lady as Boba Fett. That's right. Yeah, a couple years ago. Excellent. Yeah. That's funny, we were just talking about body painting. Yeah. It's funny how things come around. Did you get to show off? On the Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Netflix. I was watching the, the Skin Wars. <laughs> skin Wars. <laughs> it's I, say, I was watching it. It was like my wife was watching it, but now our okay. whole family is watching it. Oh, okay. My, my daughter actually tracks it down. Oh, wow. Goes to mommy's Netflix profile. 
look through for skin wars. <laughs> so, and then we all sit there and say who we think is going to go. You don't think it, you don't who sit there and say up. who's going to win. You say who's going to leave. Oh no, we we'll say who, who's going to win and who's, who's oh, okay. leaving. Oh, we like that's sad. Part. Oh yeah, we focus entirely on the uh, on the negative. On the negative. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Morris says, hi, Dave. Hey, Sean. How's it going? Um, also, uh, Russell says he's currently on his snow troopers right now. Nice. Oh, cool. Um, and Carl said, you said Boba Fett and the Bounty Hunters, but I heard Harry Potter and the Bounty Hunters. Right. Now I need that movie. <laughs> uh -oh. Awesome. Awesome. Harry Potter and the Bounty Hunters. I, w I would watch that, actually. <laughs> Who said they were painting their uh, snow troopers? Russell. Russell. Russell Carroll. Okay, cool. Russell, um, quick question for you. The uh, with your snowtroopers, are you using a different sort of off-white on your sort of on the um, the cloth parts? So they've got that big cloth cape mm -hmm. skirt thing. Yeah. And then the a lot of the trousers are cloth rather than than the sort of the, heavy the armor. plastic or whatever the yeah. plastoid armor. So I'm just curious. It's um, to help di differentiate them from the actual troopers outside of shape. Yeah. Okay. yeah well, yeah, I think so. Um, it's one of those things on on screen. You don't see it a lot because mm -hmm. they're doing a lot of rushing around. But looking at a lot of photos of those costumes, mm -hmm. the, it did feel like the the uh, cloth was more yellow. Was a warmer color. It, yeah, yeah. It seemed yeah. Like a bone. Yeah. Sort of. Rather than a, the cold white of the, so the armor. Strong. Yeah, so I, I can see what I'm you're just kind of curious as to how other people are sort of attacking it. I don't know how they're not attacking it <laughs> with clones. Right. Uh, Zach says when I painted my snowtroopers, the armor was white, but the cloth part I used a flesh wash from Army Painter. It worked okay. great. Okay, nice. Cool. If you guys are watching and you are not currently in our Painting Happy Little Minis group, Please join us there because we do like to share our, you know, the things that we paint, and everybody in the community that's in the group shares the um, different paints that they're doing as well. So yep. uh, we love seeing everybody's stuff. And if you have questions, you know, the community there is really good about answering them and giving tips and things to make it so that everybody is improving their craft. Yep. Exactly. And I would love to see those snowtroopers. Now there's a there's a unit with less than twelve minutes. Of, right, <laughs> it was screen time. Jeez. Carl Blackford says, "Is that T Dave Taylor? I see." It is. <laughs> How you doing, mate? <laughs> so who's going to watch Solo this weekend? By a show of hands. <laughs> I can't see it. I can't see anything. No, not me. By a show of it, waves. <laughs> not me because I would just really annoy you next week. It will drive me insane. Or just kidding. We've got. We actually have tickets booked for uh, Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. With the whole family seeing it. Oh. Yeah. Is that okay? That's actually. Is that all right with you? No. I, of <laughs> Is course. That I, mean, I don't understand <laughs> what. Uh, but yes. Um, I was surprised that you're not going to take your kids to the drive-in to watch it. They're playing it at the drive at Benji's this weekend. <laughs> and That's cool. Is that, is that where you're going as well? I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because they're doing a big, like, duck till dawn thing. Okay, ready. So at, oh, they're doing the whole... So at 6.45 is when the gates open. They start, you know, yep. getting in there. The first movie in the in from the Dusk till dawn uh, Memorial Day weekend event that they do yep. is Coco. Okay. So That's a great film. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Then it's Solo. Right. Then it's Infinity War. Okay. Then it's Black Panther. Right. <laughs> Four movies for ten dollars a person. Right. Sick. Wow. Yeah, they'd fall asleep after Coco. So. <laughs> yeah. The Dice Odyssey says not too excited for it. Waiting for the home release. Okay. Don't Wait, you, he has a home theater. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he not inviting us there to watch movies? <laughs> I bet he gets advanced copies too. For review purposes. Looks like Nick, Russell, and Sebastian are going to go see it. Did they put their hands up? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That is so. awesome. Michael yeah. says, I have to do a pr promotion tonight at the theaters for Solo, um, but then got to leave to MegaCon early in the morning okay. for the storefront. Busy days and fun times. Uh, who was that again? Michael Bruce. Hey, Michael. Um, so my boss, uh, Josh Jeppy, is going to be at MegaCon. So if he stops by your booth, you know, tell him that we said hi and that uh, <laughs> we're really jealous that him and Kevin went to Disney already. So, um, yeah, please do that. Make him feel really uncomfortable about, you know, t going to Disney without his, his whole crew. That would be great. <laughs> and then smack him on the butt. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> He'll get the joke. He'll know what it's about. <laughs> nice. Zach Eagle says, I'm going to see it without my wife and kids, so I'll be going solo. Ah, <laughs> perfect. Oh, 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 oh. Perfect. Oh, that oh, joke's oh, about. Oh, oh. <laughs> buta, buta, solo? Bah. <laughs> what is it? Bantapudu. Bantapudu? That is hilarious. Oh, Fred says, many years ago, I painted minis for our group's role-playing games. Um, yep. But fast forward 30 years, and Still it's it. hard. Well, it's hard for him to see. So oh. he was saying, I wish that pu game publishers would um, print larger fonts on the cards. It'd All be right. nice. Yep. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense. With that, you can, uh, you can probably just maybe just photocopy them to a yeah. larger size. That might help. Yeah. Well, um, especially if there's like an online version with a PDF, All right. then you yeah. can zoom in. Right. If that makes sense, like on the rule book or something. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Michael says, Emerald Dragon Games will say hi. All right. Very cool. So what, are, what kind of projects is everybody working on uh, as far as their painting projects back home? Are you doing uh, Star Wars? Are you doing terrain builds? Because like I said, I did, I did share this into the terrain building group. Yep. Um, Sean Morris, that was mm -hmm. just a little bit ago. Uh, Sean uh, runs that group. Oh, OK. Yeah. Very cool. Also, Dice Odyssey asks, who's excited for Disney World's Star Wars world? <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm excited. Johnny's excited as well. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> I'm excited in the, in the way that it's going to be awesome. Right. But I'm not excited in the amount of money that it's going to cost me. Right. Yeah. So I, I <laughs> it's really, going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> I really, really, really want to go the opening weekend of that event. Yeah. As like press or whatever to get in there and be like, <laughs> "Hey, we did it. This is what it's about. It's so much fun." Because I've been, I've heard that like if you go on the ride, yep. the the Millennium Falcon where you pilot the Millennium Falcon and like maybe do the Kessel Run or whatever. Yep. As, let's say you crash it. As you're walking around the park, yeah. your your like magic band or whatever that oh, okay. alerts people around of uh, your failures or successes and certain things that you've done. Right. And the park employees who are in characters and stuff will be yep. like, "Hey, look at it. it's the guy that crashed the Millennium Falcon." Ha ha ha. You know. It's, right. Yep. How cool is that? <laughs> that it's is a awesome. totally interactive and uh, thing. Uh, but I guess like the hotel and all that stuff is only like. A two-day experience. So okay. You, 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 you check in, you spend your day, day to night, and you check out the next day after whatever the, yep. the story arcs that they try to push people through. Okay, right, yeah. So basically your vacation has NPCs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a giant Star Wars LARP, and I want That's to be a funny. part of that. <laughs> yeah. So people have got a lot of things going on. Um, Dice Odyssey says Star Wars Imperial Assault, nice. um, but I'm not filming at the moment. Okay. But I'm thinking of doing Rising Sun minis, minis. Carl says I'm starting to paint my Iron Skull Boys for our Shadespire League. Nice. Oh, cool. um, Shadespire. Shadespire, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> You'll get that. Uh, a different Carl says I'm working on an Ogre Command Crew from Reaper. Oh, oh wow. Massive Darkness. Uh, Minis from, by Peter. Okay. And those are all great. Far Striders, as well. Far Striders. Far Striders. Yep. From that's the Shadespire. Uh, Shadespire. Oh, okay. That's the second uh, of the Stormcast Eternal. Oh, okay. Units. Makes sense. They're the ranged ones with the sort of the crossbows. Okay. Also, Russell answered your question when you were talking about snow troopers. Yep. Um, the snow troopers just primed white uh, by Army Painter, and uh, 
Moss Moss as Isley. Moss Isley. Isley. Sorry. Moss Isley. Uh, board work. Hired this girl. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> Uh, just finished my buildings and now working on hills and stone formations. Cool. Awesome. Excellent. So, Rustoleum stone texture spray worked nice for the building texture. Yeah, yeah, it is good. I think, um, I think that might be what we used for, for the piece of terrain that we did. Oh, okay. For, um, the Legion? Kind of the, yeah, piece? the Legion one. The one that we made out of the uh, junction box. It was. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, again, if you guys aren't already a part of the Painting Happy Little Little L I L Minis uh, Facebook group. Go and join that. If you're painting any of that, uh, the, the Massive Darkness, the Star Wars, uh, the Shade Spire, all those things that your guys are painting, we'd love to see it. If you're building terrain, we want to see it. Uh, that's one of the things I want to get into doing. Yep. Is actually building some terrain. Um, cool. Because now that I'm yep. uh, redecorating my house, the better fit my uh, my lifestyle. Uh, I'm gonna have some diorama set up, right? Where cool. I can be like, here's a here's the battle of the goblin horde over here in the corner of my dining room. And then people yep. are gonna be like, where's your dining table? Who needs a dining table when you have a goblin horde attack? Yep, <sighs> exactly. <Get it> right. <laughs> <laughs> priorities, priorities. Uh. Cool. Yeah, I was Good. going through my big Kalex bookshelf. I think it's called Kalex from IKEA. Right. Um, and, uh, well, you didn't go for the Billy? Uh, Billy's just, it, those are nice, but it, it's not a five by five cubed up bit of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I started, I cleaned that all off last night, and then I started bringing up from the basement the dregs of the basement, <laughs> all right. my RPG collection. Oh, okay. And put it up there, and it, it looks really nice. Cool. So nice. <laughs> So we have a question from Michael Bruce. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, he is saying, I'm beginning to use more of the shades and not washes in the end because the shades are more controlled. But the shades add a darker touch if done properly. Or maybe it's meant the washes. Any suggestions on how to use a wash coat more efficiently and aesthetically pleasing? Hmm. Well, uh, what, sort of, what sort of models are you using, uh, using them on or? Uh, textures, I guess, is the question. Because um, washes and uh, glazes, I guess, that um, are going to shade your, your models can uh, be a little bit tough to use over larger areas, large flat areas. And if you are using them over those sort of areas, um, probably adding a little bit of uh, like flow improver to them um, can be better because it'll help break the surface tension uh, the water or the, the wash mm -hmm. so that um, basically you don't get that pooling kind of effect and right. what you can sometimes end up with is like a little tide mark right? where you've got a little patch of um, what do you call it? patch of washes dried um, but as it's dried it, 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 it's more concentrated in the center but it has that yeah. that, that dirty tub that ring. ring yeah <laughs> yep exactly um, I'll take a picture it. of my tub just so you can oh, get a better Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> what? Things I have to work with. <laughs> <laughs> hey, points of reference. Yeah. <laughs> we got another word for you. Inner monologue. Yeah. <laughs> I do not understand what you're saying. And uh, it Rick's, offends me. Rick's only got the one. <laughs> if you don't understand what I'm saying, how does it offend you? The, the fact that he doesn't understand it offends him. Yep. Yep, that's exactly His own it. ignorance offends him. Yep, my own ignorance <laughs> offends me. Oops. I didn't mean to hit the, the nail on the head, but I guess. Hey, truth is truth. <laughs> I'm a little sad. I, I brought in this big mason jar full of uh, uh, lemonade to drink during the show, and I got it about halfway done before we even started. <laughs> yep. I have a problem. I, uh, I'm just worried that you brought in some lemonade. <laughs> yeah, it's just lemonade. <laughs> Let's reset the giveaway for people who are just joining. Okay. Uh, we are doing a giveaway. I know it's not miniature or painting related, but it is gaming related, and that's what we do here at Game Trade Media. We've got a dice cup from uh, Q Workshop, which is really cute. 
Uh, it's it's not just cute, cool. it's super nice. It, wow. True. I mean, she's not wrong. And then we've also got some Dwarven Dice by Q Workshop as well. Uh, so you get your basic dice set, but it's got some really cool, like, uh, Warhammer uh, imagery on there. It's it's pretty slick. Yeah, that's a nice little... There you go. Yeah. Right back over there. Here we go again. So there's the, the, the dice cup, so you can put your dice in there, shake them up. <laughs> there you go. It's got a, Looks like it's got a black uh, dragon. Sound sword. not included. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, if you want to uh, re-record re this or play this back <laughs> and grab the uh, sound bite, you could actually uh, put that on something like uh, Sirenscape. Maybe. <laughs> um, up upload your own uh, sound bite. <laughs> right, okay. And what does that have to do with? Well. <laughs> Thanks for keeping him on Thanks, track. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> in order to win that, we ask that you please share this, this broadcast on your social media or in a group that you think would enjoy it. Um, and but after you share it, just in the comments below, let us know you shared it. Just say shared. Because uh, sharing is caring. Because sharing is caring. And we're trying to build our community uh, <laughs> here uh, in a positive way. And also, in, we enjoy everybody that joins us. So thank you for joining us and being a part of our community as you allow us to be a part of yours. Um, and I've said it already, too, is we do have a Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, which is our, our little community of of uh, knowledgeable painters and me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Basically, you, people having fun with painting. Yeah, yeah, people having a good time with the hobby that we all really enjoy. Yep. So please uh, re send a request to join that, and we'll add you right in. Exactly. Uh -oh. mm. um, also, Nick says he's going to make that sound his text message tone. Yes. Yeah. Bacow! Bacow! <laughs> also, Michael, who asked the question originally, said thank you, and yes, I meant the glaze. I'm using okay. them on Simon products, particularly their new sculpts in Zombicide. Cool. Nice. Is, yeah. um, which which version of Zombicide is that you're you're, you're uh, putting together? Is it Black Plague? Is it uh, original Zombicide? Yeah. Also, but Shane Bowler says hello. Hey, Shane. He just got back from doing a, a run. He's, he's doing a documentary on oh, cool. brick and mortar comic book stores. Oh, excellent. Um, and he just got done doing a run out on the West Coast from, I want to say he started in San Diego and right. went all the way up to Washington State. Cool. Um, excellent. So that, that, that's Shane that was in when we were working on the, it uh, was, yeah. the Dragon. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, that's going to be a really cool little, little documentary. And uh, we'll keep everybody, you know, abreast of that uh, as it progresses towards completion because yep. we'd like you know all success for Shane and his project indeed that's cool yeah that's yeah, a great idea Love it. what other really fun stuff's coming up we got Megacon we already talked about that where is this Megacon it's is in it? Orlando okay it's Megacon the like the it's, uh, Disney, or is it Star Wars? It's, no, uh, well, Megacon is just a comic right. book convention. Okay. It's not uh, associated with Disney or any of okay. that. Um, <clears throat> but they announced uh, Star Wars Celebration is going to be in that's... Chicago next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Because that's yeah, usually Rick, What in... do we have to do to get to that? Um, I can't talk about it on camera. <laughs> uh, this is a family-friendly show, so... No... But it usually hey, involves no, uh, enough said. getting approval from the upper management, right? Yeah, we're not going. <laughs> There's another thing. But too, I am. <laughs> is we can apply for press. Yep. And go on our own dime. So the Dice Odyssey asks, I'm making assumptions that uh, GTM will be going to Gen Con, right? <gasps> that assumption is correct. Okay. Yay. Yes. We will be at Gen Con. Well, uh, so at Gen Con, just so you guys know, it's going to be a little weird because <laughs> we will not be on the showroom floor. Uh, we are going to be in, I guess, we're getting a skybox at the, right. at, at, um, the stadium, at the right. stadium. Okay. And uh, be doing some interviews and stuff up in that space. Yep. But we will have Leona and yep. or Johnny, they might, you know, take turns, but they'll be going around the showroom floor with somebody to do like, hey, we're at the Calliope booth, Calliope Games booth. Uh, we're gonna check out their new game, the Mansky Caper, and do okay. a little like 
at the booth on their demo table type stuff as well. That'd be cool. Um, so yeah, Very it's gonna be a lot cool. of a lot of fun. Yay! Also, Shane says on the gaming side, Portland had an incredible amount of purely gaming shops. I have no doubt. I feel like I drove by every. I, I feel like I drove by one every three minutes while I was hunting comic shops. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it. I mean, there's Excellent. a lot of publishing companies in Washington State, so. Yep. But you know, Portland's in that. Oregon. Portland's in Oregon, but that's okay. <laughs> What's that? Speaking of being excited by, or offended by things. <laughs> also, Joseph says, shout out from the Philippines. Nice. Hey. I love the Philippines. Some stuff. Hello. I was there in 1994. I went to the Philippines. I have only been there once. Well, not actually sort of outside of Manila Airport. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was in Manila Airport in 93. Nice. Just after we a. Just missed each other. <laughs> yeah. It was. <laughs> a year. It was just after a monsoon had um, come through and ripped the roof off the airport. Oh, wow. And of course, drenched it. So. Party. Yep. <laughs> Went through on the on the way to Europe, okay, and on the way back, it's odd. and they hadn't hadn't quite fixed it uh, on the way back, but it was so all the carpet was still really musty and oh I bet it smelled terrible, hmm. and it was like nine. But it degrees. was still a good time. Right? Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> but sorry, in the Philippines though. No, um, I have some friends from the Philippines, and they're wonderful people, yeah. and I love them. I worked with a lot of Filipinos in Hawaii when I was stationed there. Cool. And, uh, it, you know, of course, my reason for going to the Philippines was military yep. esque. So. Very cool. That's awesome. I went to Subic Bay. Cool. Yeah. I've had a lot of really fun. I mean, it was a military, so it's not always a good time. But sure. I, I will say this: I did get to travel a right. lot and have been to so many really cool places. And uh, if anybody out there watching is ever, you know, at an age, a younger age, where the military is still an option, give take it, it. Just take it. Give it a go. Yeah, okay. Give it a go. I mean, I, I've been to uh, Dubrovnik, Croatia, right, where they film Game of Thrones. The King's Landing scenes okay. because the castle right there yeah. yep. is that's King's Landing and but I didn't know this because I was there <laughs> twenty years before they were filming. No, no, God, jeez, man, no. <laughs> Five years before they were filming, it was probably right about there. Yeah, it was, it was two thousand three, two thousand four. I don't know how old he is. I'm elderly, but um, seems really old. Yeah, it's got all these stories with the Werther's candies and stuff <laughs> and my ribbon candy. Yeah. Candy dish at my house. Exactly. Peter says, must run. Enjoyed spending time with you all. Hey, Peter. Thank you so cool. much. Thanks, Peter. Have a good one. Also, Michael says, almost hit a mountain there because I didn't program the INS properly when I was matching it up with the GPS. Oh. I just plugged in the last known position for my pre-flight. Oh, no. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't like, sound good hmm. at all. That, yeah, that sounds quite deadly. <laughs> Note to self. Don't fly with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Way ahead of you. Nice. And these are fun. These are fun little minis. They are. There's a lot of detail in them. They're not quite the same size as uh, Legion. No. I think Legion is what? It's larger. Legion is larger. Yeah, two to three millimeters larger. Um, I think it's a little bit more. But uh, I think sort of ostensibly they're 32 millimeter for Legion. Yeah. And these are what, 28? 20, 25, 28, somewhere in okay. there. So. Shane says, I'd trade my giant size X Men number one for a plate of authentic lumpia. Lump, lumpia? Lumpia. Lumpia, lumpia most mm -hmm. days. Filipino food is to die for. It is, except for bloat. Nope, nope. Okay. Bloat is not, not to die for. Bloat? Bloat. You've had it, yeah? No, I haven't. You know what it is. Is it that, no. that fruit that you open and it? it's stinky, yeah. stinky? I felt bloated. But. No, bloat <laughs> is a, um, it's a chicken egg that the chicken is almost, uh, like halfway towards just, it's Oh, whole. yeah, I know oh, what you're talking about. And you eat it whole. You eat it whole. Yeah, you kind of slurp it and crunchy, yeah. 
It's it's their version, in my opinion, of Lutfi Lutfisk. Lutfisk. Lutfisk from uh, the, the Scandinavian area that fermented herring. Gross. As as in stuff that people used to eat a long time ago and now just used to amuse tourists. Uh, well, or to torture us. Torture tourists. Yeah. Because. <laughs> uh, because nobody it, actually needs to eat know, that stuff anymore. <laughs> like you said, I have a lot of stories. Right. Yeah. So my second wife was from Sweden. Her family yep. still lives there and everything. And uh, the first time we went to Sweden to see them, yep. of course, her father, uh, you know, was like hanging out with all of his, uh, some of his friends. And they're like this whole like uh, dr drinking schnapps. Right. You know, which is literally just turpentine. Um, <laughs> uh, and they're like, everybody wanted to meet the, the big American kid. Right. And yep. uh, I get there and. I'm out there, and they offer me some schnapps. Yeah, try this. And I was like, oh, that's literally burning my throat yep. uh, uh, away. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, this will, this will take care of that. This will calm that, that burning sensation down. And uh, they gave me a bit of that, that fish. Bit of the lutefisk. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Linda, wouldn't, Linda wouldn't kiss me for like three days. Right. Because it, it just sticks. Yeah. The scent and the taste is there for days it's <laughs> <sighs> that's funny yeah. but did it get rid of the burning yes because <laughs> it, it was kind of like if you've seen the movie major pain with damon wayans yep and the one guy gets shot and he's like ah he's like i know how, here I'll, I'll take care of that and he breaks his finger it's like now you don't have to think about that because you're you know thinking yeah. about this it was that same kind of situation right also, Joseph says, um, he was the one from the Philippines, he yeah. says, don't forget the salt and vinegar for the balut. Right, yes. Yes. And uh, Sid asks, are these imperial assault? Yep. They are. Yes, indeed. We're uh, painting them up. These are uh, models that are going to be used uh, in the Force and Destiny. Yeah, the RPG the, by RPG? Fantasy Flight. Yeah. Uh, so we've been doing uh, episodes of Building Character, which is our, one of our Friday afternoon shows where we take different role-playing games and we do a, a character build based on that. But uh, we found that it's a lot of fun to build teams over time. Yeah. and pa uh, Like parties. Like, yeah, adventuring parties. And so we're doing a, the Star Wars one uh, has um, all characters from the Force and Destiny source books for the RPG, which are all Jedi-focused or Force-sensitive characters. And uh, so on the rotator, on our Tesla spinner right here, see how I do that again? Leona's like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have one of the characters, uh, Tacklin. Tacklin, who is Tracklin. a... Tracklin. I'm sorry. Tracklin. Tracklin, who is a guardian. And he's the... Uh, of all the uh, Force-sensitive and or Jedi, like straight Jedis in the group, is the only one that carries a lightsaber, which is kind of a cool thing. And he's been trained in the Force. Absolutely, yeah. But remember his backstory? He was... A oh, an Imperial uh, trooper. trooper. Yeah. And then he... Went to a planet. Yeah, his whole thing was he goes to this planet. Yep. And over time, he just kind of became kind of like overwhelmed with the way that the Empire was treating other species. And he gets to this planet is kind of like, we kind of like Avatar-esque, where they, the, the indigenous species were very much attuned to the Force and their planet and the Imperial... Uh, forces were going to just like wipe this whole race out but he goes crazy right and uh defends them and with them uh he kind of ends up living with this race for a while yep. and like one of his like virtues is protector guardian over these um this particular race right which is really cool very cool and like he's got some tattooing there on his arms that represent war in, in that indigenous race yep. represent warrior Right, okay. Or, and protector. Protector. Yeah. yeah. Defender kind of thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's okay. a super cool character background. But I, was, I, I keep telling everybody as we've been doing these characters, uh, I, I keep thinking like in comic book terms or in cinematic terms, a cool scene would be is uh, Tracklin and the group are surrounded by these creatures or, yeah. or Imperial forces or stormtroopers or whatever. And Tracklin does like a, a flurry of lightsaber strikes and then in his completion lets the lightsaber go and it flies to the neck to to um net onto net uh, into net's hand and net does something to zoom and he lets it go and it flies over to uh slick no not slick slick is the only is, slick and the wookie are the two that oh in, in this, yeah because there's a there's 
tomorrow's character build is, is, the, is the new guy. And he's a hammerhead. Uh, the ones that have the, where they can bellow their, their throat out. Okay. There's like a sonic the, uh, boom. Athorians. What? Athorians? Yeah, the Thorians. And he, uh, but he's a Jedi like counselor or prophet type thing. And instead of a lightsaber, he carries this staff that has a kyber crystal as its head. That, yeah. uh, is sensitive to the attraction of uh, other Jedi type artifacts. So he's kind of like the beacon and seeker in that capacity. Right. And uh, but he would catch it and have the the staff and the sword, and he kind of like would smash, swipe, and let it go when it comes back to Tracklin's hand and. You know the the opposing forces are all like laid out in front. Of <laughs> it's like yes. Also, um, Martin in the chat had been asking, um, like, do we stream all? When do we stream? And so I answered. But their other question was, what do you guys paint? Um, everything. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much everything. Um, because we are the um, we are associated with Alliance Game Distributors, um, we are beholden to paint miniatures and product that we distribute through Alliance. So, yep. um, but it's a lot. Which is a lot, almost everything. There's very few, uh, unless it's like an indie published game that has miniatures, like um, Arena Rex, which isn't distributed. Um, we, don't, we, we won't paint those. I love those yep. miniatures, but we just yep. you know, won't be painting them on, on camera. No, so we, we generally focus on uh, a pretty Pretty wide range of things. We do a lot of uh, role playing yeah. miniatures, miniatures for role playing games. Yeah, Reaper, Wizards, or yep. WizKids. WizKids. Um, we do board, a lot of board gaming stuff. Mm -hmm. So stuff from uh, Simon and yeah. IDW. IDW. Um, quite a bit of stuff from Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah. And uh, GW, we said GW, right? Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, so GW yeah. as well. Games yeah. Workshop, yeah. Um, yeah, so those you know, yeah, so a lot of the miniatures from many different companies and brands. Uh, we tend to try to give a certain miniature set. If we like, like these two here, we'll, we're, yep. we're only going to paint them today. We're not going to do the, come back and be like, even if we don't finish them today, we're not going to come back next uh, Tuesday and be like, hey, we're going to finish these miniatures. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on to something else. But sometimes, like if it's uh, uh, besieged, we did those and we gave them a couple days. Yep. Uh, Legion, we gave a month and a half or two months. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Um, do we have... Where'd he go? He's behind. Oh, he's right down oh. there. Okay. Do you want to switch him out? Yeah, and absolutely. Here's... We'll show, show you one of the ones... Was so this was uh, Vigo. This is Vigo. Vigo. So I hadn't quite finished Vigo on uh, Tuesday's stream, so I took him home and finished him off. And he looks uh, great. It turned out pretty well. So Vigo is like Bear, who is like <laughs> from, you know, he, he may be from the Bravnik Croatia himself. <laughs> and he's very much like to a... Uh, like to hug? He, he, yes, he'll hug the bad guys, <laughs> you know, because bad guys need love, love too, yes. And swords. And swords and gut. Yeah. Is, <laughs> you know, as is necessary. Yeah. So um, Sid was asking, we are using some of the heroes for Age of Rebellion. Do you mix the books? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for the RPG portion yeah. of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mix, mix the books as, as uh, the players would want. But um, because these are all going to be pre-generated characters, we just use the one book to kind of highlight that, you know, the Force and Destiny stuff. But would we use uh, the other ones? Yes, absolutely. Also, Clive says, um, we have just built a D&D group based on our own personalities and uh -oh. then played so no one else is in the group, and it's been so mad. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's but where you role play as yourself. As yourself. <laughs> Sounds terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. But what's interesting is coming up with your, your stats and skills because you're usually when people do that, they allow their friends to help them with like if I said I'll, I would have a 14 intelligence or if I said I had an 11 intelligence everybody go you're right they'd go yeah 11 yeah you got, you got 11 but if I said 14 they might be like oh come on Rick I don't know yeah you're stretching a little bit there <laughs> but if I said I had an 18 strength that would be well sure yeah I, I blow 18 out of the, out of the water yeah. actually yeah I'm sure you would actually yeah but if I was to say I had, like, 11 strength, people would go, what? What? <laughs> what? They'd be more inclined to say nine? <laughs> Eight. 
Eight. <laughs> I have negatives. 7.5, I don't know. Whereas my constitution <laughs> is like, would be like a 10. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mine would probably be a... Uh, It'd be better. Might be a, a 12. Yeah, because I... 13, maybe. <laughs> Charisma, three. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'd, I'd, I'd go off four maybe. No, nah, I'd go off your successful Kickstarter uh, and say <laughs> you probably have a better charisma than that. Yeah. All right, on the next episode of Building Character, the characters we're making are ourselves. <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> what does everybody think? Using fifth edition D and D. Michael asks, how do you do the eyes? Do you move them to first or usually last? The eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I do the eyes right towards the end, actually. Um, there are, there are a bunch of people who start the eyes first. Um, they'll have a, the miniature might be uh, undercoated in black and then they'll paint the eyes in first, get those right, and then paint everything else around it. Um, some people like to have the eyes up looking at them the whole time. I mean, not looking directly at them, but so that it, it looks like a, a person or a, sure. a character. But eh, I usually save them towards the end. Um, something this, Small, like you know, smaller, twenty-five mil scale. Something you can actually do is let me just get more of the dark brown. Uh, is not actually paint the eyes if you don't want to. You can just get sort of a darker tone of the, the skin and paint that in to make it like a deeper shadow. Oh, okay. So you you don't need to see the eyes. Ooh. You're just kind of making a shadow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as we were saying before, it's super scary because in the studio here we have a big we have a really big monitor. So when we zoom in like that on the models, I can see all of the brush strokes. It's kind of frightening. Also, Martin said, I live, in the, I live in Wales in the UK, and it is cool to watch other paint as I paint a lot of hordes and War Machine. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Also, Clive said, we are playing each other, so it's mimicking even worse oh. to see oh. how others see you. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so much fun. Could you imagine if I had to play Dave Taylor? <laughs> no. no. I'd be like, no. have a good day, mate. <laughs> Call that a knife? <laughs> you know, all the stereotypical th phrases from Australia. All the things you hear me say every day. Look out, a drop bear. Cooking on the bar for me. <laughs> Beware the platypus. No, you, you never see the drop bears coming. That's the danger. <laughs> I guess that would be a fail. That would be an epic fail in your end role playing Dave Taylor. Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, you wouldn't see the, the platypus. Either. Well, yes, Johnny. Johnny's waving at us. <laughs> He's giving us a signal. I don't understand. The, um, okay. But that would be his catchphrase, beware the platypus. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what? What? He, he, just, he just says it. Dave's okay. favorite food, paint. Paint. Because <laughs> you love eating it, get beware it? Beware the get platypus. <laughs> I'd get a little bit twitchy after, like if we were adventuring and it was like a few days without getting to sit down and paint. There all kinds, all kinds of in my paint tray above, I needed to grab. Because uh, I didn't have it in my yellow box of paint here. And just that, I'm really enjoying the sort of the color scheme that I've got going here. But I'm just adding a little bit of extra detail on the shoulder pads with some, um, with an orange stripe. He nice. looks awesome. He's good there. So his backstory is that he's part of a family that's in the entertainment industry. Did Rick already say this? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. A no little mind. bit. I didn't like expand on And it. he doesn't want to become the heir of this right. entertainment. He wanted to find his own path. Yeah. And he, and he like really believes that, you know, the force is a path to, you know, potential like glory, but not in a like worship me type thing, but he could be remembered for doing good things yeah. through the force. All right. Also, we have a question. Uh, Jason asks, after your base coat, what's the easiest way to do highlights? Uh, 
Generally, it depends on the, the texture of the model. If there's a lot of, uh, if you have a lot of texture, like uh, fur or chain mail, uh, the best way is uh, to go with a dry brush. Try a very sort of careful, controlled dry brush. Um, highlighting is always working from whatever color you've got to a lighter color or a lighter tone. Uh, so never try to dry brush a darker tone over because that will flatten everything out. Um, if it, there isn't a lot of texture, if it's sort of larger flat areas or sort of um, areas like on the back of the, the uh, vest here, we can skip to that, there we go. Um, this is just using uh, the layering technique where you start with the, I started with the dark brown then just use lighter and lighter sort of versions painted on those areas. Uh, and thinner and thinner sort of amounts being used. Nice. So you turn out pretty well. Uh, but yeah, so it depends. It really depends on on the the surface you've got. Um, with something like um, large sort of metallic mechs or mm -hmm. something, robots or whatever. Uh, with that, I'd use a dry brush as well. Start with a darker color, like tinny tin. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> and then uh, the stuff. dry brush up um, to get those uh, those lighter, lighter colors. Right. I might pop. Um, what color should I make his goggles? Like the lenses of his goggles. Mm. Should I go with like a, a really pale blue? That sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. And just have make it pop out. We've only got a few minutes left. I should be able to squeeze it in. On our <laughs> broadcast here, everybody. Uh, we started a few minutes late, so we're going to give it a few minutes past just to be, you know, get that hour in. Yep. Do we hear from Josh today? Mini Painting Studio? No. No? Mm -hmm. Oh. Also, Carl says pale blue for the goggles all the way. Cool. Okay. And Sid asks, are you guys enjoying the dice reading? Is that I'm referencing the Star Wars one? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Never mind. Do you, you remember how the Star Wars, they have the different dice? Yeah, they do have different yeah. dice. I, I'm I'm not sure how I feel about them yet. <laughs> I think after we do an actual uh, sit-down RPG of it, playthrough with these characters, uh, which we will record and put out for everybody to watch, uh, then I will have a better point of reference to it. It reminds me of um, like when you work with different board games and you just have to learn it and then once you know it, it's like really nice. Yeah. And your brain really appreciates it as opposed to doing the math <clears throat> all the time. Oh, okay. Because they have, do they have? They have symbols. More, more, sim more symbols than like one through six. Yeah. Okay. Or Brilliant. one through 12, yeah. It's like if you get so many, um, you know, attack dice and okay. explosions and stuff and right. defensive. Okay, it doesn't look like there's too many different symbols, though. It's like this, the star or explosion or whatever, the little, whatever this one is. Right. And then but, uh, the little corner of the TIE, like yeah. wing, wing of the TIE fighter. Yeah. So in oh, completion cool. of this, we are going to uh, one last time let you guys know that we are holding a contest. And a winner can win uh, this cool little uh, dice cup um, with a dragon on there, which is really nice. That is awesome. So you got our dice cup here by Q Workshop. Just open it up. It's real leather, too. And it's re <laughs> legit real leather. And uh, a set of dwarven dice, which uh, everybody really deserves and should have in their collection of dice. Because, like I said before, you can never have enough. And how you can win these is... Please share this on your social media so your friends can come back and watch it, yep. um, or in a group that you think would be um, would would enjoy watching this as well. And then comment below with shared, and we will uh, go through and uh, probably have Leona. Yay! <laughs> uh, you I, tell you someone said, they won. You tell someone they won. You said probably as if it wasn't going to. Be. <laughs> it's, it's really, I know, right? Uh, That's why. Because Johnny and I are. Going on another run over to the uh, warehouse okay. after this. Cool. 
Rick, I just gotta give it like shout out to Q Workshop because like everything that they make always looks like immaculate. Yeah, shout out to like, Q Workshop. There are a variety of dice that Beautiful. they have, like the Elven <laughs> one and the uh, the Celtic and that and the Cthulhu. The like Cthulhu they've got so many sick. cool things out there. Yeah, and we'll be well, giving away. Well, you're sick after using them. Well, they they're the, the ones I have are the metal ones, and oh, okay. they're so heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and I like I like when I roll those dice. You know, when they hit that table, you're probably gonna have to get some repair work done right and I like that <laughs> um, but yeah nice. so please share this uh, it will be available for people to come back and watch afterwards so we'd yep. like to see have more people check us out um, also if you are not a part of our uh, painting happy little minis uh, Facebook group please go there come show join us. us yes join us show us what you got going on what you're doing what you're painting what you're building yep because we want to see it and if you have questions, if you are new to the hobby of painting, we'd like to uh, let you know that everybody in that group is very helpful and friendly. Yep. <laughs> and uh, let's show the minis. There we go. I, I didn't okay. finish the base. Crap. That's OK. Dang it, they're back to back. Oh, they look good. There we go. See that, the orange and the blue? Yeah. It's like that universal hunter's orange. Right. I like it. <laughs> All right, yep. Yeah. And that's funny is I the, the, the shirt yep. underneath the orange jacket I, and the jacket itself I didn't get to do any highlights to, but you can see on the yep. back of the backpack I put the little like yep. metallic little highlights metallic on stuff. there. You know look at what it'd be really good. So all you need to do there is a little touch up where some of the like the blue's gone onto the orange and mm -hmm. vice versa and that sort of touch up those areas and then like a, a wash with uh, like an army painter strong tone. Okay. You can just put that over the whole thing. Okay. It'll tie everything together. That'll look good. Yep. They already look like a, like they're a part of a team. Yep. But let's let's do one last yes. shot real quick because now we can put the first three members of our our team there. They yeah. just look. See, one of the things we got going yes. on <laughs> is bl the blue, the blue and, and orange. orange. Yeah, blue and orange, and all of them. The, but they don't look like they're wearing uni like the same uniform. Correct. So. Yeah. Whereas, Great. you know, uh, Tacklin has the orange lightsaber in the blue outfit. You put little orange stripes on his arm, yep. uh, shoulder uh, greaves or whatever, right? Yep, just those little plates on the yeah. end. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. These guys look awesome. Oh. They're going to be so much fun to play. Neat. Yes. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. This has been Painting Happy Little Minis. We yep. appreciate everybody joining us. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching Game Trade Media. Before you go, we wanted to tell you about our new book, The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, which is available to pre-order right now. You obviously love tabletop gaming, so do we. And this book provides a look at the history of all the different types of tabletop games, from card games like Magic the Gathering to role-playing adventures like Dungeons and Dragons, to the most classic of board games like Clue or The Game of Life. Right. We've also got interviews with a lot of industry veterans like Peter Atkinson and influencers like Matt Mercer, plus discussions with collectors and gamers of all kinds. The book also discusses the impact of crowdfunding on the industry and looks into why board gaming is, is experiencing such a boom right now. We put a lot of love, a ton as a matter of fact, into this book, and we like to think that it provides a perfect snapshot of what makes tabletop gaming and the tabletop community so great. You can pre-order your copy right now by using diamond code APR181585. So head into your local comic or game shop today and tell them you want the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.